As a photographer, I'm sure you know a situation like that, that you go out for photography on one day and you find one composition beside another and you return home with quite strong photographs in your bag. But on another day, you can do whatever you want, but you can't see any composition and you return home without a photograph or at least without a masterpiece in your bag. And you have no idea what you have done wrong. And we hear saying, I, I just had a bad day or I just didn't get creative today. And that's so true. But the question is, what is the difference between days like that? Why do we get amazingly creative on one day and why do we struggle that much on another day? And knowing about the circumstances that make us creative cannot only avoid struggle days, it can even lift our photography up to the next level. don't need this today for the next project, chaining the photographer out on location. That's just a joke. Hi, my friends. Very nice to see you. For those who watch my videos regularly, you know that it is really more than a year ago that there happened something to me. I insured my knee. I wasn't able to hike anymore for months. Slightly steeper areas were not possible for more than half a year. And I'm still quite limited with steeper terrain. I still can't knee down and I, I still can't walk wherever I want. So I'm really still quite limited and, and that for more than a year now. But the thing is, this year was one of my best photography years ever. I got so much more sensitive uh, for finding compositions. It feels like the percentage of getting masterpieces are even doubled up. But before you're going out now and trying to break your knee, you really shouldn't do that. I will tell you exactly how it will work for you without pain. So what happened? How did I achieve to improve my photography? And the nearly distressing thing is that I did something that I knew already my whole life. I just never took it seriously, to be honest. And we all do that, but unconsciously and just on those days when we are creative. So let's have a look what it is and how we can bring more creativity into our photography. Well, I mentioned my grandfather already multiple times in my videos. He was a homeland painter here in Austria and a professor of art. There is really a lot that can photographers learn from, from painting. But today I want to tell you a bit more about my grandmother, my grandfather's wife obviously. So my grandmother left to travel the world and she spent a long time in Africa and Asia, India for instance, multiple times and always for months. She was a teacher and this is why my bigger trips were possible for her. And whenever she returned from a bigger trip, and this started already when I was a little boy, whenever she returned, she had to tell so many amazing stories about foreign cultures and history. She was very interested in things like that. And it was so enjoyable just to listen to her, to her stories and yes, while sitting on the couch and having a hot chocolate or something like that. And quite interesting is, I didn't see this back then, but each story she told included a deeper sense. It was always anything that could help you in different situations of your life. And today I know my grandmother told me how to get more creative in my life. Or let's say how I can create circumstances that allow me to get more creative. And I mean, this is amazing. It is exactly what I need as a landscape photographer. I just didn't see this for decades. Why in the world didn't I, I see this much earlier? <laughs> Okay, so what is the difference between days where everything seems to be so easy and you can really see one composition beside another and days where nothing seems to work? Well, the problem is that we are used to thinking efficiently. You know, when we were babies, that's quite long ago for, for me at least, by the way, we were interested in, in everything we saw for the first time. So let, let's take this cup here, for instance. I mean, it is nothing special, right? It's, it's just a cup. You know one, you know them all, right? But when a baby looks at this cup here, what does it do? Now let's imagine it doesn't know what a cup is. 
and I'm sure you guessed it already, it starts to engage with the cup. It pays attention to it. We never do this as adults. I mean, it's just a cup. We know already what cups are, right? So when we look at this cup here and we just see a cup, there is no way for creativity. I mean, it's a cup. But when we start to engage with the cup in a way like we would experience it in the first time of our life, that we have never seen it before, we suddenly see that uh, here are some damages here maybe, or here's a big crack inside. I hope you, I hope you can see this. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, more, more, more damages here. And also the pattern is interesting. It is yeah like a chess field with uh, uh, light and darker oranges, uh, bigger squares up there, and it gets always smaller down there. Um, as more as I engage with it, I, I see things at this cup. And I like this cup, I have to say. It contains my ginger tea already for years, and that's quite good, by the way. <laughs> but however, it feels that I would have a personal connection to this cup. And ultimately, it is not just a cup anymore for me, it is unique. Uh, it starts to get an individual actually. And 15 seconds ago, it was just a cup. And now it is much more than that. So what have we done? And I will tell you in a minute how to implement that all into your photography, of course, to get a better photographer. Uh, just let's have a quick look at the principle. So what have I done with the cup? Well, I just tried to experience it in a way like I would see it for the first time uh, in my life. And usually we don't do that. We, we have learned as babies that we need to categorize things. Now, this is a cup. Now, that is a tree, a mountain, a lake, a stone, a rock, whatever. The problem is, whenever we see a thing, we have already determined what it is by its name and we stop thinking about it. And this is how people are used to thinking. And the upside of categorizing things is that we're able to determine things quickly. So this is a cup. I mean, it saves a lot of time when, when you uh, know what a cup is when you are thirsty. And uh, it were weird if we had to engage uh, each single time when we need this thing here to use. So categorizing is good, it helps us to survive, but the downside is that we stop thinking about things we see. Because we think as we know the names of the things, we know the things themselves. We even think that it would be maybe a waste of time to engage deeper because we know the things already. And I ask you, what could be worse than that if you want to look for compositions? You want to find something special, but you can't see it because you stop thinking after you have categorized that that thing in front of you is a tree. As long as we categorize things, we block our ability to get creative. I mean, we could capture the tree, the lake, the mountain. We could even arrange them in a nice manner, putting them into the golden ratio maybe or whatever. But you know, one of the most important requirements for getting art is to create something new. This is really, it can't be art if you don't create something new. That's simply impossible. Capturing is not creating something new. Capturing is just the technical process of bringing light onto your, the, the sensor of your camera. And I mean, that's enough for, for a snapshot too, but it is never enough for a finite photograph. In finite photography, we want to photograph the soul of our scene. I, yeah, I think this nails it, the soul of our scene. And to be able to create something new, we have to understand the things, we have to get connected with them, we have to make them do it individual. And this just works when we experience them in a way as we would look at them at the first time of our life. And now, before I'm going to show you how you can implement that to your photography, my friends, I'm very really happy. If you could give me a thumb up, it helps me, it helps the algorithm, it helps also other photographers to find this video better on YouTube. Thank you, therefore. Now, due to my knee injury, I have been totally limited in my photography for, for months and even more than a year later now I'm still limited with, with walking around. So what have I done to turn that anyway to one of my best photography years ever? In, in the first months I tried to compensate my, my limitations with putting more effort into my planning. And I'm quite happy with, with my planning. It allows me to be prepared and I got out already really strong photographs, lots of, of strong photographs with the right planning. But it was quite hard to compensate all the lack of uh, moving around with more planning. And I have to say, 
I really, really struggled here in the beginning. And the way it worked for me finally, and how I got some really great photographs uh, during this time of uh, being insured, was that I stopped thinking in that way I was used to. This shot here was taken from a parking place. I really, really like this one. And there's so much of storytelling inside this image, and it has such a high impact. Again, I took it from a parking place. I had never planned to go to a parking place for, for photography unless I'm not able to walk. I mean, I'm a landscape photographer, a nature lover. I, I never love to spend my time on, on, on parking places. I just use them to park my car. And whenever I did this, I, I didn't engage with the environment around the parking place uh, from point of view of, of photography. I always tried to get away from the parking places as fast as possible to get to the beautiful nature. But finally, it was so good that I was not able to do this on that day. I'm so happy with this image. And the way I got it to work was that I paid attention to the environment. I straight at the parking place or, or this shot here, it was taken around 20 meters beside the road. I have spent the whole day around this spot, beside the road, forgetting that light. I engaged deeply with the composition and I tried to imagine how it would look with different light situations. I had never tried to find a composition that close to a road before. You know, I'm a landscape photographer, I don't like roads all too much. But engaging with nature beside the road made this image. And in one of my last videos, I had to interrupt my hike up to a big waterfall as the trail was locked. I didn't have a plan B, but I spotted a little stream straight beside the trail. Nothing special. I followed it yeah, for around 200 meters or something like that. And I got five photographs I'm, I'm quite happy about. I just followed the stream. Five images. <laughs> I didn't determine that uh, these are stones here. I, I paid attention. I engaged with them and I suddenly saw the interaction between them all. Not because I'm such a good photographer or something like that. Just because I engaged with these stones. I saw that, that leaf here, also that one up there. Uh, there's a little branch. A part of it is outside of the water. Uh, there are even more stones under the water and we can see the subtle glare on the surface but there are so many more details I have engaged with when I've built up this composition I paid attention I engaged with the characters in reality these are just stones yes but I got connected to them with paying attention with engaging I got them to individuals for my composition of course, I considered all the things I always mention in my videos about composition, like balance, contrast, tonality, flow, all these things, but I considered those things unconsciously while I was engaging with them. And I liked to engage with all these things for quite a long time, by the way. It is not that I had to force myself, therefore, I just did what I liked to do. And ultimately, the image was made by engaging and paying attention. I didn't categorize, I, I tried to look at these things as I had never seen them before in my life. And if you work in that way, that you stop categorizing, it is something like, yeah, it, not, not you are finding the composition, it, it feels more that uh, the composition would find you. I know this, this sounds totally weird, but it really feels like that. And my grandmother told me about that around 35 years ago. I mean, it wasn't invented by her, these are just concepts from Sam and that's an Asian culture and I didn't take it seriously for so long and as I had to change my photography due to my knee injury it took me a while to understand that but how can you implement that now into your photography without breaking your knee or just quick that's really important for me over the whole year I got lots of emails and, and uh, private messages from landscape photographers who got also insured. So if you are insured at the moment, uh, if, you, or if you should ever be insured, what we don't want to hope of course, but in that case I can just say to you, don't give up. Use this even as a chance to improve your photography. It is difficult in the very beginning, but I promise you, if you don't give up and if you try to find a new way of your, for your photography, you will return for a as a better photographer, guaranteed, really guaranteed. So how can you implement that into your photography without having an insurance? Well, the problem is, and I said this already, we are used to thinking categorized. The only way to break out this here, to get used to experiencing things like a baby again. Yeah, this really nails it. We usually don't do this, of course, 
A tree is a tree and you know one, you know them all, right? <laughs> Not really. Uh, getting used to experiencing things like a baby is quite easy, but it is not enough just to do this when you are out for photography, to be honest. Because when you are out for photography, this process of thinking should work automatically. You should not have to think about it. So what you can do is uh, experience your daily works deeply. For instance, uh, yeah, let's say uh, you are polishing your shoes. Don't just do that to get them clean. Think about what you are actually doing. Uh, look at the cloth, how it gets compressed. Uh, look how the polish gets spread over the shoe. And uh, look how maybe the surface of the shoe changes while you are cleaning the shoe. Uh, get used to experiencing things like you had never seen them before in your life. And yeah, that's really a good thing with, with your daily tasks. Look at the little things that are usually not of interest. Things you would usually ignore. And the cleaning of shoes was just one example. Uh, get used to all your houseworks uh, with, with, with a way like that. And when you go out next time for photography, you will automatically be used in this process. And you will know then what you have to do with the trees, the mountains, the lakes, rocks, whatever. You will know what you have to do to get a strong photograph, even without thinking all too much about that. And that's quite important, by the way. Don't think all too much about it. So the reason why we do so hard sometimes with finding a composition and then another day we just see one composition beside another is that in the latter situation we simply pay more attention, we engage more with all the things. This means whenever you struggle with finding compositions just pay attention with all the details and try to experience everything as you had seen them the first time of your life. And also try to avoid stress, by the way, because with stress you, you don't have time to engage deeper, right? A stress would uh, let you think already about the next photograph while you are working on, on one composition. With stress you, you just categorize things in stones, trees, mountains and so on. And you are not ready to receive a composition from Mother Nature in that case. That's really like that, not we find the composition, the composition finds us. Sounds creepy. But don't get me wrong here, this doesn't mean that you should not plan your photo trips in front. Planning is good, you will arrive prepared, but independent of how good you are prepared when you are out for photography, uh, when you always try to engage with things and you pay attention, you do really much easier with finding compositions. This is a really good and strong method to, to get more creative. And by the way, this is not the only method my grandmother told me um, to get more creative back then. There are many more useful things for getting creative, um, even uh, yeah, for getting inspired. Leave me a comment below if you're interested to learn more about ways to get more creative. If I see enough comments, I will maybe make more videos like that. And by the way, planning is really good too, but I think sometimes it is also good just to grab your camera and go out and just look what happens. Rely on the power of paying attention and you will be rewarded. There's always any kind of composition out in the field finally. And if you're not sure about how to find compositions out in the field, watch this video here, I will explain everything in detail here. So I thank you so much for watching my fans. See you next time. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be.